a one-of-a-kind endogenous DMT breakthrough sent in by a subscriber. Before I begin, for clarification, I would swear on my life, my whole family, dead grandmas and all, as well as the DMT entities themselves, that this really happened to me, and I guess I had no other way to prove it besides describing my experience and putting this on everything I love. So this is about a trip that occurred recently, where I took absolutely no drugs. No physical DMT was used whatsoever in this trip report. This was an unexplainable occurrence that shocked me more than anything ever has to this day. This was no flashback, rather a fully immersive, four hour long DMT breakthrough experience through the DMT proven to be sourced in my own body. So I am a huge poly addict, more so than a psychonaut. I've used about every drug known to mankind. I'm a massive advocate and proponent for dimethyltryptamine especially. I've got the molecule tattooed on my back connected to a third eye as a representation of its spiritual importance to me. So I've been to 27 treatment centres or rehabs at only 25 years old. I've hopped from one to the next for years attempting to get sober, but I never could. Because once I quit one drug, I just go on to the next, as I've been addicted to 15 different drugs in my lifetime. When this particular experience happened, I was kicked out of a treatment centre for using salvia, isobutyl nitrites, blue lotus, DXM, nitrous oxide and alcohol. I was periodically homeless after this, and had made my way out to LA. I hit my biggest rock bottom there. I was alone, hopeless and ready to die. I was devoid of my values and spiritually inept. An empty flesh bag prepared to dissolve into the ground, six feet under. While walking around LA, I got many symbols while in my sobriety that were linked to my upcoming divine intervention. I'd see a bunch of items on the ground that represented all kinds of different things in my life. I saw a computer with a mop on top of it, which I interpreted as my upcoming brainwashing or hard drive cleansing. I had a Galaxy Z Fold 2, my prized possession, that I threw into traffic shortly after. All the messages I was getting told me the reason I couldn't get sober was because of how deeply intertwined that phone and everything on it was into my addiction. I had to get rid of it. Not too long after I ditched everything I owned, besides the clothes on my body, every materialistic thing was just gone. I threw it all away because it was all linked to a low frequency energy. Next thing I know, I'm without anything. I'm going to the nearby in and out to ask for free food because, well, I was homeless. They gave me meals twice and I cried in gratitude. Because they had a bathroom and would offer me free food, I slept under a tree not far from the restaurant. Now, following into the next day, I'm suicidal. I can't keep doing what I'm doing anymore. And these weren't fake attempts, mind you. I was trying for death. I tried to hang myself. I made damn sure it was secure when the deed was finished. But I still managed to fail miserably. Something wasn't letting me die. I then decide I'll close my eyes, meditate in a mindful state, and walk straight into traffic. A busy-ass intersection, nonetheless. I do this multiple times, preparing for my onslaught. Instead, something supernatural happened. Every single car had stopped and maneuvered around me in an impossible way. Nobody out of the many, many cars honked at all as I was walking right in front of them. It was as if I had some kind of force field on me preventing me from being hit. I should have been hit 15 different times, but it absolutely would not happen. So after all this, I had to use the restroom. This is when it randomly hit me like a ton of bricks. As I'm sitting on the toilet at my worst, I look up at the stall door and suddenly, numbers, codes and alien languages start downloading in psychedelic colours right in front of my own eyes, directly into my brain. An overload of information bombarded me. I was thinking, how is this even possible right now? Was I drugged? And I knew that wasn't the case when I realised what kind of trip this was. This was hyperspace. It's not possible for me to unknowingly be drugged with DMT or ayahuasca. With LSD, I could have wiped my ass with some acid-soaked toilet paper, I guess. But what would have been the chances of that? But this was a feeling I knew very well. It was dimethyltryptamine. I staggered out of the restroom, barely knowing what I was doing. I was right next to LAX airport and one plane multiplied infinitely, 
creating this auditory hallucination that sounded like rebounding echoes of planes leaving and returning instantaneously. It was very psychedelic. Everything had this incredible sense of interconnectedness around me. The levels of perception were scripted into my vision as I felt myself entering each state. Hundreds of valuable lessons were entering my brain without my permission. The lyrics of Tool bounced around in my head. Forgot my pen. Shit the bed again. I would find a piece of cardboard and a pen to write down every message and lesson that was being taught to me by the entities. They were very mad at me. The piece of cardboard was packed full of valuable information. I put it in my pants and start making symbolic connections more than ever before. I blacked out temporarily and found myself in front of a CVS pharmacy. Apparently, I had trespassed and tried to get in, and they wouldn't let me. So I reacted by screaming bloody murder, yelling in tongues, numbers and codes. They called 911, and I was put onto a stretcher, continuing to scream as the trip was still in full effect. Eventually, I remember arriving at the psych ward. As I'm laying down after barely answering any of the staff's questions, I feel as if I'm on an operating table. I vividly see aliens performing different kind of operations on me as if they were digging out my character defects and replacing them with values. I felt as if I was in some kind of cosmic sewing machine, as I would visualise all the energies around me, swifting and turning interchangeably from every person in the room. And that's about the rest from what I remember. Shortly after this, I changed my ways significantly. I felt way more connected to my family, who I selfishly deserted for drugs. I made amends with my father, who I claimed to despise my whole life growing up. My life was drastically altered. My sense of taste and smell completely changed after the experience as well, which I found very odd. It was a scary, but important, spiritual ass-kicking that I deserved at the time. My theory on to why this endogenous experience occurred is because I committed an atrocity that night by breaking a promise I had made to the entities while in hyperspace and to everyone that loves me most as well. I promised them I'd never commit suicide in my first experiences with DMT. And this was so spiritually significant to me. It was the whole reason I got my DMT molecule tattoo in the first place. And I went through with it anyway. So, I was punished. For the better good. With a powerful breakthrough trip without even having to touch the actual drug. I never once thought the DMT entities were real. I always thought them to be our own subconscious, taking the forms of aliens, gods, and creatures that relay vital life lessons that we forgot. But now I know that they are out there. I'll never be an atheist again after this. This changed my life forever after, and I will cherish this priceless experience for the rest of my life. Well, that was absolutely mental to be fair. <laughs> never heard anything like that before. And it's actually really interesting because I've definitely thought about this before. They go on about DMT being stored in the pineal gland because they found it in rats, I believe. And there's lots of theories as to what is the purpose of that. Um, because a DMT is found in loads of shit. It's found in like grass. It's found in so many naturally occurring thin, th uh, things. It's found in the human body. And many people theorize it, say like dreams or um, sort of natural psychedelic experiences. Um, are just DMT being released naturally into the brain, endogenously. So, even though I'd say a lot of people are going to be like, this report is so fake, I can't believe you actually shared it. Um, I, I just, I mean, I'm a sceptical person, but I also just like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, this person really seemed like they were at rock bottom, and there's many anecdotal reports of people who are literally on the verge of suicide, sort of having these... <clears throat> spiritual psychedelic revelations probably the most famous being Eckhart Tolle if you've ever read any of his stuff he was on the verge of suicide and um, he eventually literally was about to hang himself and he just like had this deep spiritual revelation uh, into like uh, the beauty of the present moment um, life reality and uh, how to sort of calm tame the mind and live a deeper more purposeful spiritually um, resonant life and basically the same thing happened to this guy here although it was much much trippier than say uh, the other an anecdotal reports of people being on the verge of suicide and then sorting the life right out straight after 
Um, there was also a really interesting aspect of this where, say, it, when he was like, all right, I'm just, fuck it, let's just walk into traffic and see what happens. Interestingly enough, I've also had a similar experience when I talked about it in my Panic on the Streets of Manchester video, my very, very first trip report video I ever featured on the channel where I was running around Manchester naked. And there was a point in that trip where I was like, right, there's absolutely no difference between what I'm experiencing now and physical death. So I literally just ran into traffic and like I had the exact same thing where I just managed to completely like miss all of these cars, buses and everything. They were like, it was, it was like something out of a fucking dream, mate. Like they were literally just swerving around me basically. And I was like parkouring over them and everything. It was like, it was completely unbelievable. And this guy sort of experienced the same thing. It was like, when you're in such a, trippy state like that this is like honestly this is going to sound crazy but when you're in such a an altered state like that like in radically altered state so far removed from the normal state of human consciousness it's like death is almost impossible at that point Ugh, i don't know this is just this is just me theorizing this is me getting into some serious uh rambling right now but honestly sometimes these things just cannot be explained and the best thing we can do is just speculate about it who knows what's actually going on honestly mate it's actually crazy I'm really happy that this guy, obviously, he, he, he sort of he went through the dark night of the soul and came through it um, a much better person, and he sorted his life out and realised um, why he's like a, um, a poly addict and how to get through that, and realising the deep love that he has in his life, his family, and um, his uh, spiritual quest means more to him than just masking the pain with drugs all the time. Uh, really, really impressed with his uh, experience there. But yeah, very strange that it was just like a naturally occurring DMT experience. That is actually mad. If any of you have actually experienced that as well, please let me know because this is very fascinating stuff that I'd like to cover again in the future. Because I genuinely think it's possible. Because obviously, yeah, like I say, um, obviously DMT is in our brains, in our bodies. It could make everybody's like chemical makeup, genetic makeup. There's so much variation in the human species. I honestly don't doubt that there are people who, who are literally born with just, say, random DMT influxes into their body at certain points in their life. Anything's possible, mate, honestly. Um, there's scepticism, and then there's like, there's like healthy scepticism, and then the sort of like closed minded, unhealthy scepticism where I, I obviously see this in the comments all the time. Um, most people are very open-minded about stuff, but there's a lot of people who are just like, no, this is completely impossible, absolutely impossible, no way this could have happened, absolutely fake, completely faked all of it. And it's like, yeah, anyone could have, all of these stories could be fake, couldn't they? But you, you can't just, you can't just narrow your thought process down to, oh, this is completely true, this is completely fake. You've got to be an open-minded about taking in all perspectives and all possibilities. Um, so yeah, don't get too clung to something being real or fake. It's like, mate. At the end of the day, or if you've actually experienced a psychedelic state and you've completely lost sense of your body, ego, reality, the world's completely melted around you, you start to be a lot more open to the fact that these ridiculously supernatural experiences can actually occur. I'm a lot more open now to the fact that people are born with like psychic abilities and shit. But this is probably the point where loads of people are going to start unsubscribing because I'm getting into like woo woo new agey territory or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't subscribe to any of those uh, belief systems at all. I just believe what I have experienced from my own like direct uh, experiences. And uh, it's just made me a lot more open to the fact that yeah, the, there's so much variation in the human mind. and everyone has like different chemical makeup like even like say like neurodivergent people experience reality in such a profoundly different way to sort of like normies um that i, I honestly don't doubt the fact that there's people who are like constantly getting an, an influx of dmt into the brain all the time and they're like tripping every single second of every day sort of in a sense um well honestly honestly i just think anything's possible fucking reality is infinite in it so why wouldn't that be a possibility Yep, this is really interesting. I hope you're doing much better, my mate. Um, let me know uh, what you thought of this trip report and answer any people's comments in the uh, the comment section because I imagine there's going to be a lot of people asking what the crack was here. So, yep, hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Uh, I love featuring these funky, unique reports, and I'll see you in the next one.